when I was first asked, I um I didn't I said no to the project because I kind of my instant knee jerk was like, well, it's too close. And I've kind of within my career always sort of tried to stand on my own two feet. So I was like, well, it's too close. And then I I kind of thought on it for a little while and, and realized it's somewhere that's very close to my heart. I've been going there since I, I was a kid and I love the people, I love the studio, but I really did not know much about the 90 year history. First of all, it was a shock that it was 90 years. And so I was just um, intrigued and then I learned so much. There's so much, so much history there. Hello and welcome to a very special edition of the movie podcast. My name is Daniel and joining alongside me is Shabazz. Hello, Shabazz. How are you? Oh, hello there, Daniel. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Oh, wow. Right out of Liverpool, Shabazz right, right. is here. Yeah, you know, I'm slightly forgetting what accent I was doing now, and I can't remember. So here I am. Uh, I'm kind of getting back into it, you know. I'm just, I just wanted to say I'm so glad you had a chance to talk to my daughter. I'm actually not Shabazz. I'm <laughs> Paul McCartney. Uh, okay, got yeah. you, got you. <laughs> I just wanted. Well, I just, you know, I thought Paul was here in the studio with us. Shay, that was yeah. spot on, Hold absolutely on. spot on. Uh, uh, hey, man, sorry, I was just, oh. I was just inside the body of Paul McCartney for a second there, and wow, the, the ghost of him, even though he's alive, you know. Yeah. Uh, and now I, I'm here. I'm, I'm back, man. What, what was happening? What did I miss? You know, you just missed one of the best introductions ever. You know, we oh. had Paul McCartney introducing the show. Wow, obviously. we're uh, at that level finally. We're at that level, right? We are. Shay, how are you? How are you doing? You know, this is going to be releasing in the new year. So we are uh, right at the, the end of 2022. So who knows what's happening in 2023? We don't know. We're still 2022 people, you know, like a little secret for everybody out there. We're still 2022 <laughs> people. So, uh, you know, we haven't done our resolutions yet. We haven't started them. So one day, one day, who knows? Still, a, still not the greatest person that you've met. But I will be in 2023. That's the goal. Okay. That's the goal. I think that is the goal. I like what we have to, you know, aspire to. And hopefully the movie we're going to be talking about today in the interview will help you get there. Because today on the movie podcast, Shay alluded it to already, we are talking to the one and only Mary McCartney, who is obviously a director. She is a, a cookbook author. She is a photographer. And she is a director of the very documentary that we'll be talking about today, which is called If These Walls Could Sing, which is a documentary that is talking all about the history, the legacy, the magic of Abbey Road Studios. You know Abbey Road. You've heard what the studio is. You know who recorded there. And now this documentary is going to get you on a behind-the-scenes journey of what actually happened there and the magic, this the, the presence, the aura that is all encompassing when you talk about Abbey Road. Shay, growing up for you, what did you know about Abbey Road? To be honest with you, I always just thought it was the Beatles. Like I, it, it never was the place. It was never a location for me. It was never a studio. It was always just the Beatles album Abbey Road. I remember my grandfather had it on vinyl and he'd play it all the time in the house. So it was uh, it was just just the Beatles for me. And I feel like now through time, even though Abbey Road exists longer than than the Beatles really it's you know it's yeah it, you can't hear Abbey Row without hear without thinking of the Beatles like they're they're synonymous to each other so it's true uh, that's that's really what it is for me like that's all I think about is just the Beatles that uh, you're so right you know for me and I know for you too but the Beatles are like the be all end all for me and you know if I, I could speak selfishly to myself right now when I think of the works of the Beatles, when I think of Paul McCartney, Paul McCartney is my favorite artist of all time. He is someone that music I listen to daily. And to be able to be in the position that we were in to speak with Mary, who obviously I could have gone off for hours just talking to her about what was it like growing up with Paul McCartney as your dad. Um, we really kept it focused on the studio, her directorial debut, um, this documentary is absolutely beautiful. It's releasing on Disney Plus here in Canada on January 6th. So at the time of you listening to this interview, you could go watch this on Disney Plus, and I encourage you that you do because not only are you going to hear from Paul and Ringo, you're also going to hear from a range of musicians from across the industry, composers, you know, R&B artists who have worked within Abbey Road 
and it really is a place that uh it's like it's like church man like you just you just feel a different presence when you're in there and i think it's going to challenge artists to always you know bring their best when recording shay i would love if you're cool with it Drop us a little synopsis about what we could expect in this documentary. Absolutely. But I also do want to remind you that not only did you speak to Mary, but just minutes ago, you spoke with Paul as well. I just want to I'm remind you. I'm so sorry. You. How how did I forget yeah. that Paul McCartney did the intro? You know, he we asked him for a jingle. He said, I won't do a jingle, but I will do the but introduction. I'll, I'll, I'll give you a jingle. I'll give you a jingle. The, the <laughs> Is he give me a jingle or a jangle? I don't know the difference. Well, I'm, I'm back. Sorry, man. He oh, we just we just he's back again. He's back. I'm back now this time. <laughs> For more than 90 years, Abbey Road Studios has been at the heart of the music industry. Fans journey every year to have their photo taken at the world famous zebra crossing, and artists strive to follow in the footsteps of their heroes. In this personal film of memory and discovery, Mary McCartney guides us through nine decades to see and experience the creative magic that makes it the most famous and longest running studio in the world. I love it. I want to say thank you to our friends at Disney Studios Canada for making this happen for us. This really was a monumental moment uh, for me to to be able to speak with Mary, I wish we could have all been there talking with her, but um, it was so cool. You know, like we'll 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 talk more. We'll kind of debrief it afterwards. But I just want to say, of course, as always, you'll be able to catch a brand new episode of the movie podcast every single Monday at some point this month. We're still figuring out our, what our schedule is going to be, but we have lots of interviews coming your way. We already have a lot going on on the social side, so make sure you're following us on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, and Letterbox because there's lots going on there. You don't want to miss it. So without further ado, please welcome Mary McCartney to the movie podcast. Thank you so much for sharing your time with me today on the movie podcast. It is wonderful to have the opportunity to speak with you about your beautiful film. Oh, thank you. You know, you've uh, you've directed many projects before, but this is your but this uh, the These Walls Could Talk is your feature debut. Where did this project begin with you? Uh this is a project that was actually brought to me by a producer called John Batsek, who did um, Searching for Sugarman, One Day in September, um, Oscar, you know, worthy producer. So he messaged me and was like, have you thought of directing a feature length documentary, which I had been thinking of. So it kind of came from there. It, it just sort of was brought to me, which is the dream, right? Right, of course. And, you know, you've... Man, I mean, like you, you've grown up part of this world, obviously. And, I, and I'm curious for you, what was it like, you know, for me seeing, you know, your, you know, your baby pictures and, and growing up in that world um, in, in, in Abbey Road, what was it like for you being there now telling this story on, on, on this side of the camera? I mean, to be honest, when when I was first asked, I um, I didn't I said no to the project because I kind of my instant knee jerk was like, well, is too close and I've kind of within my career always sort of tried to stand on my own two feet so I was like it's too close and then I I kind of thought on it for a little while and and realized it's somewhere that's very close to my heart I've been going there since I I was a kid and I love the people I love the studio but I really did not know much about the 90 year history first of all it was a shock that it was 90 years and so I was just um intrigued and then I learned so much. There's so much, so much history there. There is. And I, I think that's what's fascinating for me because, you know, going into this, you know, Abbey Road for me growing up has always been my association, you know, to the Beatles and to Paul McCartney and to John Lennon and Ringo and George. So to see this history of not only obviously the Beatles, but all of these artists who have made their mark there. And I think, yeah. I, I think what's so interesting is that there, it feels almost like there's this mysticism to it that I always thought like there, there's a place there. Did you feel that when you were recording interviews there, when you, when you were there as a kid, did you feel like that kind of aura about being in yeah. that road? Yeah. I mean, that's part of the reason. Yeah. What I, what I hope is for the viewer is that a lot of people come to make the pilgrimage to the zebra crossing and you know right on the wall that you you don't you can't go in because it's a working studio so in making this documentary i've kind of really filmed it and did the interviews as much as possible in the studio so i really want to invite the viewer in it's kind of got a very casual informal tone to it and as you were saying with the beatles i thought oh well look i'll show lots of other things but then i kind of soon realized the beatles are the 
are probably the band that recorded there the most, like all of their albums bar Let It Be were at Abbey Road. So they really used every single corner of that studio. But then I, you know, I learned about Jacqueline Dupre and Fella Kuti recorded three albums, you know, the Afrobeat mm-hmm. Nigerian musician and um, Elton John and Jimmy Page were session musicians there. It just sort of opened up a whole world that I didn't know about. So it was really intriguing. Yeah, that, it's so lovely, and I, and I love that moments in 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 the film where you know we get to hear Elton talk about you know meeting Paul and you know the Let It Be had just come out and and, and you know your your dad performed for him there. I think that's those are the stories that I think that you know not a lot of people may know about because you know we see like the legends you know we see them on the screen we see them we hear them in our headphones but you know hearing these smaller stories about like how these came to be it's it's really impressive. Where yeah. did you where did you look to when you first wanted to see like hey we know we know like the bigger names but w- where did you go to when you wanted to find these other artists who you know made their mark there as well i had like a huge list because it it's an official documentary as well we had access to the abbey road session sheets so i had like an amazing research team and it was a small team but a really professional team and we had great chemistry so we sort of sit around a desk and we'd go through it chronologically and we i like wrote down on paper with post-it notes and sharpie pens and stuck it up all around the walls all the people have been there and the timeline which i have to say was quite daunting because it literally covered every single wall space in the room i believe it uh, and then from there we thought about what was the story what are the story arcs sort of how would we you know do, do it chronologically do, do it in subject and um and then what archive and what interviews you'd find so it sort of all fell together we kind of worked on it all together and it sort of fell together like a jigsaw puzzle um i think the people that were included were you know i wanted to talk about session musicians and then he was really happy to find out about jimmy page and john i wanted to obviously talk about the beatles so i was able to interview giles martin who's george martin the producer's son and he works closely with them and he worked closely with his father so it was really poignant and in and um and informative to be able to speak to him. He's so eloquent and explains it all so well. And then there's all the movie area, which, you know, the the deal that sort of saved the studio in the 90s and brought a whole new lucrative deal, which brought like Indiana Jones, Star Wars. You know, they still, they have all of the uh, Lord of the Rings trilogy was done there, all the Harry Potters. So I knew I wanted to do sections and then say for the film section, John Williams agreed to be interviewed. So then I kind of hooked a lot of it on him and George Lucas and and Empire Strike Back. So it fell into place nicely. It was a lot of work though. It was, it's a, a building, of, an in, a, a documentary about a building. So through the portrait work I do and, and with this, I'm very keen to sort of get an emotional connection. So how to make a building emotive was my task I sent myself. Oh, and I think if if I may, like you captured this film so beautifully. There is such a distinct look to everything, and I, and I love how before every you know before every interview, we are just looking at almost at the the empty studio, and like you, there's nothing in that room, but you feel something, and I think you convey that so wonderfully throughout. You you I had that feeling throughout all of it. You don't you you speak so wonderfully to the magic that is in that studio but you never reveal the magic which 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 keeps the the you know almost like the magic trick intact for yeah. for everyone watching it right well the, the, first of all it's funny and i appreciate that you like those shots because it was so hard to get the studios clear because it's <laughs> a studio, and especially studio one the large studio that does the orchestral recordings um, it was full of kit and equipment. I'm like, guys, I'm doing the beauty shots for the documentary. We, have to clear this. Like, we can't clear it. So it was a real military operation to like move things out to a different area, move it all behind the camera. So I was determined to get those beauty shots. Uh, and the other thing, I think part of the reason it still has that magical, inspiring feeling is it's a modern studio. Like Studio 3 has been updated a few mm-hmm. times and and have, um, but Studio One and Studio Two are really like walking into a time capsule. And that's not because it's a museum, it's because it has that sound quality and it has this uh, aura about it. I mean, Nile Rogers in the docu- 
on in the documentary says you know he thinks that musicians are superstitious and that they pop their game when they walk into that i felt a bit that way myself it's like you need to honor the, the location it does feel like it has a soul yeah, it very much is pushing the creative boundaries when I think when artists go in there, right? As 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 said in the, in the film, uh, and and I love also too that you know we have a, you know an incredible legacy of artists, but I love that you also focus on, you know, the technicians that are there, you know, the 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 balancers, everything, and you know, and just being able to, uh, you know, kind of break down each track as we have some moments within the in the, the film that does that too, and and uh, Lester is someone else that I have here in my yeah. notes that uh, was such a just a lovely person to hear from because those are the people who you know keep that place up and running yeah. and, and going right i mean it was hugely important to do a big shout out to the people that have made it what it is is a part of the the reason and my dad says it and a few people say it, it's like just everything works there it's top quality they're so amazing and professional and um and they're just they work so well with people they are there to facilitate the musicians and just make it the best it can be uh, so it's just, you know, they're amazing. And Lester also, you know, it would have been so much trouble if I hadn't included him. He's like a, <laughs> he's an icon there. Everyone was like, you've got to interview Lester. But what I was pleased with was I got a really nice, relaxed interview with him. He is being Lester. And it's just him in his work area with, you know, he fixes the microphones, he does all that. But the amazing thing about him is that like over the years, like the, the older technology would be replaced with new digital stuff mm -hmm. and then things would be sold or given away or I had to get rid of them to make space. And he would sort of, the things that he thought were really, you know, sacrilege to get rid of, he'd sort of hide them away <laughs> without saying anything. So they just vanish. And then now to this day, people are like, oh, I wish we had this so-and-so and so-and-so -so mic. And he won't say anything. And like maybe a few hours later, we're like, oh, I found this in a cupboard. And he's, <laughs> he's incredible. He's protecting the equipment. That's wonderful. No, no, I'm curious for yourself. I know you mentioned that when we first started talking that there was a little bit of hesitancy to do this project. What was it like, you know, interviewing your father, talking with Paul and and Ringo and and these people who've you known your whole life about, you know, you know, where they've created some of the most iconic music of all time. Yeah, it was. A little nerve wracking because interviewing any talent of that caliber, you just, you know, from my portrait, my photography career, you just want to create, get somebody, you want them to arrive in a good mood. And I, my documentary really relies on, on uh, a casual conversational kind of interview technique. Um, but they arrived in really good form and they were really, because everyone loves the space and they feel so passionate about it. They, right. they had great interviews. And um, yeah, I was really happy because a lot of the, the documentary um, hangs off, off the interviews because, you know, the recording, you know, there wasn't a lot of archive. Right. And and I think that that shines throughout the film. Everyone does feel very yeah. comfortable and, and just so, I think, excited to talk about this also, space. Also, that, like the fellow QT section mm -hmm. relies on um, one contact sheet. I found really? a woman take on one contact sheet she couldn't find she she didn't even really know if she had it and i was like please find it she found it she couldn't find the negatives and it was like this is what we've got we even like went up into her loft to try and find wow. eggs but i was like right this is what we've got and then when you watch it the way my editor's done it he's such a genius it's got it's so dynamic it's it i think it really works i'm, I'm very pleased with it and, and people come out of it feeling good yeah and inspired it's it's absolutely wonderful. I'm so excited for everyone to watch it. Um, I, I'm curious for yourself, uh, you know, aside from the documentary, do you see yourself returning to uh, to create another, you know, feature length documentary? Are we going to get another season of of, of serves it up? You know, the orange cook, the orange chocolate cookies are delicious. Um, uh, they are so good. Um, it's, and they're so easy, aren't they? They are. They're so easy. They're so fast. <laughs> I make them with my family all the time. They're so delicious. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I've got a cookbook I'm working on for next year called Feeding Creativity, um, which is like taking, so it's sort of like my photography, sort of taking a portrait, taking somebody creative like my giving them food, taking a picture, and that will have the recipe and a food photo. So you'll get more cookie recipes. I love that. Um, and serves it up um, on Discovery Plus. Is just I've just dropped four more episodes with like Jamie Dornan, and we do a great... Um, uh, we do like a mushroom steak and then I made a burles blanc sauce, like a French beurre blanc, which is okay. quite my mother. And then I kind of made it 
dairy free and it's delicious that's fantastic and then chunky chips chunky yep. fries i chips. saw that and <laughs> so yeah um and i'm doing i've got another exhibition planned for a photography exhibition in london in the spring but i'm um i've definitely definitely got the bug and i love directing and i loved my team so i'm literally um i'm thinking all the time like what would what, what would be the next thing it's a hard act to follow because it's been such a, a a passion you know an amazing experience doing this one so Definitely. But Mary, I just if want to say thank you. If you have any ideas, let me know. I will. I will. I will send you <laughs> messages on, on Instagram for sure. Mary, thank you so much for your time. This film is, is wonderful. It, it's such a beautiful tribute to, you know, I think the most iconic studio of all time. Um, and there is no one better who could have brought it to the screen. So thank you so much for your time. And uh, hopefully we get to talk again. Yeah, thank you. That's so kind of you. Thank you so much. Take care. Yeah, take care. Bye. And... Welcome back, Shabazz. Now, I know you didn't get to be on the interview with me, Shay, but I will say to you, and you, we've done, this has happened a lot now on the show, where, you know, we've been, you know, there was a bit of delays when it came to this interview. Right. So we were watching Babylon, and, you know, I'm just, like, waiting. I'm just like, okay, like, when's Mary going to come? And they're like, okay, you know, we're, we're delayed a little bit. She's doing a CBS interview right now. I'm like, yeah, no problem. Take your time. So we went back into Babylon, waited a little bit more, got the call that she was writing. Then, uh, then I got to go and, and talk with her. And usually when we go into these interviews, you know, we go into like a holding room, a hospitality room. But literally, as soon as I joined the link, it's like I'm in Mary McCartney's house. I was like, oh, hello. Hello, Mary McCartney. How are you? Like, it was just such a weird and surreal moment. But yeah, we just went for it. And we had like 15 minutes. It was awesome. I, You know what? I When I watched your interview, I was, I was just blown away at the chemistry you both had it was really surreal like you could tell that you know you're not only coming at this as a huge fan of Paul and the Beatles but you were there to respect the work that she put in you know you always want to kind of separate the, you know her from her father's lineage because there's so right. much that she's done that's amazing that needs to stand on its own um, it's just funny that we're, we're, we're talking about this right at the time that article came out about Nepo babies and that kind of came into yeah. my head a little bit, Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it was, it's, it's surreal because she's, she's talking about more than just the Beatles. Like this is so much bigger than that. And, uh, it was, it was wicked. I, it was really cool to see you have this opportunity because I know that she's a huge hero for you. Yeah, definitely. And yeah, I appreciate you saying that. And yeah, it was, it was very surreal. It's still one of those things that, you know, watching back the interview afterwards, I'm like, oh. We just spoke to somebody who is directly connected to someone that you've loved your entire life and who means so much to you and, and like to my dad. And, um, it was very, very surreal. It was a very, very cool moment to talk to her and just to talk to her about just like, you know, cooking and baking because like that was a big part of her interview too because why not? She she makes some incredible recipes. So yeah, that was, that was a really, really awesome moment. I cannot thank our friends at Disney Studio Canada enough for making it happen. And of course, please, if you're watching this interview, if you're if you're listening to this episode right now, go watch this on Disney Plus. If these walls could sing, um, if you are any type of fan of music, you owe it to yourself to watch it. It is so incredibly made. And I'm so excited to see what Mary works on ne next because she obviously, as she said in the interview, there was she was resistant to telling the story, right? She felt like she was too close to it, but then she also felt, then who else will? So I think, I, you know, I commend her as a director for, you know, taking on that challenge for for interviewing, you know, people that you've known your whole life in one way. But now as a director, you're talking to them another way. So um, it was a very, very cool thing to see that that she did that. And it's so fantastic. So please go watch it on Disney Plus. Shay, right now we're like I was just said, we're in an interesting spot because we're recording this at the end of the year. This is going live early in 2023, which is such a weird, weird year to say. What are you hoping, you know, do you, I know I'm not asking for New Year's resolution, but what's on your like hope list right now for for January 2020? My new hope list yeah. um, for January. I mean, January last year was such an interesting time. Or when I say last year, I mean, 2022 uh, it was such an interesting time for us because theaters were just starting to open and movies were were, were on that cusp of movies coming back. So. We now know it's, you know, everything's kind of gone back to normal. COVID was just a hoax, right? Like, that's what I remember hearing about it. Like, it was just a myth <laughs> no, or something. Man, no, no. I'm, just, I'm kidding. <laughs> Don't come for me. I I was at home on January 6th. Um, okay. You know, <laughs> but like, I I want this year to really just be 
the true celebration of going back to the theater. I, I really want this to be the year where we, I mean, we have a, a phenomenal slate of films coming out this year. January alone is kind of starting us off in a great place. And I can't wait to see what the other coming months do next month for February. We're already back to Marvel. The MCU is coming back. You know, it wasn't too long of a wait. So I'm excited. I want, I want us, I want our show to get bigger. One thing that I mentioned in our decision to leave interview was I really want us to kind of branch out a little bit more with the kind of movies we're talking about. We don't really call ourselves film critics on here, but the discussion of film needs to transcend just Hollywood for us. We need to start looking elsewhere. We need to start looking at all the other amazing movies that are out there in the world, talking more about documentaries, kind of like what you just did right now break the medium, break the stereotypes and just talk about the celebration of film because 2023 is going to be that year. We're going to celebrate going back to the movies officially. I love that. There's nothing else I could say that will top what you just said. Um, so I'm just going to, you know, attach my cart to it and follow you. Hook on, was, hook it on. Hook it on. That was wonderfully put you best. Thank you so much for joining me today on this discussion. I know um, it was a bit of a different interview because it was I was doing it solo. Uh, but I'm so happy that we were here together to kind of be brief after it and, you know, to give me some counsel after it and, you know, bring me back to life and <laughs> obviously bringing Paul here on the show as well, too. I cannot think having having Paul, if you know, Paul, the Paul hasn't left yet. Uh, I'm still here. <laughs> you know, I just wanted to say thank you for for talking to my daughter there, Daniel. Uh, I'll welcome, be honest, Paul. I I just wanted to say I've always thought of you like a son. And oh, uh, thank you. I, I love you. OK. Thank you. You know, it's 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 funny you say that because my my father's name is also Paul, mm. and he says he says these same things to me. So thank oh. you for that. Oh, well, that's good that he says it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, as always, you know, we'll be back very very soon with our regular Monday episodes. We have some great ones planned, starting of course with our top films of 2022. So stay tuned for that. We'll also be celebrating the movies that we are looking forward to in 2023. Spoiler alert, Mission Impossible is probably going to be at the top of that list. You'll yeah. See. Uh, but we have lots coming your way. The year is only getting started, and we're already starting in, you know, the highest of places that we could be. So, again, thank you to our friends at Disney uh, for making this happen for us. Thank you, Shay, for your time today. Thank you, Anthony, who is watching this on YouTube right now. Just like you can, make sure you subscribe and follow us on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, and Letterbox at the movie podcast we have lots more of the show coming your way this year you don't want to miss anything that was this time with the movie podcast and we'll see you next mm -hmm.